America uh, and my trusty costume design class. Uh, this is a new thing, so uh, we're we're all in it together, and uh, I'm going to do my best to, with Jacqueline Whiteside's help, to uh, to uh, pave the way for you to feel empowered to sketch and watercolor your renderings. Uh, you don't have to use watercolor if you don't want to. If you feel safer with pencils colored pencils or crayons, uh, you, could, you, you could try that as well. But I hope that after you watch this that you, 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 you see yourself actually trying watercolor because in some ways it's much faster and more forgiving and easier than either crayons or colored pencil. So uh, I first wanted to show you my, my own first plates from undergraduate school when I took the class that you are taking now. You can see that they are rather elementary, rather elementary. I promise you, you will do a better job than this because you've got me showing you how to do all this. So there is hope for anybody. There's, if there's hope for me, there's hope for anybody because I now do renderings like this that are, have a lot more depth and accuracy and subtlety, or sketches like this where there's a little bit more flamboyance, even more flamboyance. This is Medea. Uh, this is from an opera that we did last semester. And this is a, this is a combination of watercolor and some crepas, which is an oil pastel. It's a version of a crayon. This was uh, from Actions and Objectives at Triad Stage. Here's another, here's another one. This is a little bit more on the flamboyant side from an opera years ago. And this is a selection, this is a selection of sketches from Death and the King's Horseman, which some of you are already familiar with. So I'd like to take the, the mystique out of sketching and watercoloring for you, and we will start with a blank page. So we are looking at a blank page, and sometimes there's nothing more intimidating than a blank page. But you have your sharpened pencils, that's very important, and you have already done your work for your research book. Hopefully you've got your research book in hard copy form because it's easier to look at images in hard copy form, trust me, um, than to look at it from your computer screen because the computer screen keeps, keeps going down. But whatever you do, however you're doing this, you have your research book, you've collected all of your images, you've created your concept statement, you know exactly what you uh, intend to do with these 10 characters because of all of your hard work so far. So, what I suggest when you first start sketching is to sketch from real bodies. Just like actors are real, uh, real bodies, they're not cartoon characters, they don't have elongated necks, you know, they, they come in all shapes and sizes for sure, but they are from human bodies. So what I like to do is to take a magazine, something, you know, like this, or you can go online and just find copy, you can find bodies that are in various poses. And I find a, a few bodies that I think might work for my characters. This one is a terrific example that might work well for Elmire, but you notice how small it is. I think it's easier if you find bodies that are about the same size at the, as the paper that you're sketching on. So, you know, this one is actually a little better. But because I know that this period has, you know, a certain amount of cartridge pleating that spills out at the waist, these hands are not positioned in, a, in, a, in, a, in an easy way to sketch over the, pan, uh, over the uh, cartridge pleating. So, I am going to use this one as my body type for sketching Marianne. And so I'm going to put 
this sketch, this this uh, picture right next to my paper. I think that uh, eight by 10 sheets of paper are probably your best. I do encourage you, if you have enough money, not to do this on typing paper because watercolor isn't happy on typing paper. What works a lot better is if you have some kind of pen and ink paper, and you can get pen and ink paper or watercolor paper for that matter. Uh, it's a little more expensive, but pen and ink paper is easily bought at um, Walmart, at Hobby Lobby stores, your craft stores. So you should be able to get it at a reasonable price. And so what I do at first is I just analyze the body. Notice that this body, all of the weight is on this ankle. And if you, if you look at where the ankle is in position to the throat, almost always the weight bearing leg is very close in alignment to the throat, unless the weight is equally distributed between both legs. In that case, you'll see the throat pretty much in the center between the legs. Not always, it depends on if there's more weight on one hip or, or whatever. But that's always something to, to analyze first. Where is the weight on the body? So we see that this, this foot is in alignment with that, with that throat. And so we can also start to look at the head. And the head is a, a ball, it's a sphere. As we sketch it, we're, it, we're going to do a, a sphere maybe with a slight egg shape. You, you can see it's, it's, it's a little bit more like an egg, but cylindrical for sure. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to allow enough space up at the top for any hair, any elaborate hairstyles. And this is probably the most challenging thing you'll do. If you get your face down, you will feel like, oh, I can just do the rest of this. You know, take baby steps and then you'll, you'll have your sketch done before you know it. So I've got this, you know, this egg sphere shape. Now what I wanna do is look at what I like to call the wampas. Now, you won't see wampas in any drawing book, but for me, the wampas are a way to see the direction of the face. If you look at this face, the center of the face is going is slightly to the left. There's less of the face on this side, more of the face on this side. So the wampa, and it's, you're even seeing the wampa in the, in the part of the hair as well. The wampa is going slightly to the left, not by much, but slightly. And then the eye line is oftentimes in the center of the face. And it, you know, people tend to put eyes up toward the top, but remember that this whole part of the head is also part of what you are visually seeing. So really, when you, when you factor in the top of the head, the eyes really are pretty close to the middle of the face. And also, look at the nostrils. If you can see the nostrils, then the eye line wampa is not only in the middle of the face, but it's also slightly upward. If you see a lot of the nostrils, then it's a real dramatic wampa going upward. But in this case, it looks like it's just a little bit. So I'm going to go in the middle of the face. I'm going to do just a slight wampa for the center eye line. Okay, so I know where the tip of my nose is on the vertical wampa. I know that my eyes are on the horizontal wampa. Now, what else can we do? Well, let's draw in our nose. What I tend to do is just find the nose tip. And the nose tip is generally speaking about midway between the eye line and the chin line. Yeah, there's exceptions to that, but it's, it, that's approximately right. And I do have some nostrils here, so I can draw and, you know, a little, a little notch goes a long way. You don't need to, you know, because the pay, you know, your scale, your drawing scale is fairly small. So I've just gotten just a little bit of each nostril on there. Now I can go back to my eye line. 
The eye line is the middle of the eye ball, and the eye balls are exactly that. They're spheres, um, and, and so I'm going to draw what I like to call Orphan Annie eyes, ping pong balls. Draw your ping pong balls. Everybody think, you know, when they start to draw eyes, they, they tend to get Egyptian or almond shaped. And there, you know, I think, you know, there is an illusion of that, but the eyes are actually spheres. And that will help you think about how to add the eyelids if you think of them as spheres. So the eyelid for this, you know, as I'm looking at the, the, my, my picture for inspiration, the eyelid usually falls at the center of that eye line. And so I'm, and sure enough, that's what's, that's what's happening on this picture. And I'm going to draw this eye line right here. And she's looking a little bit this way, toward the right. So I'm going to add, well, actually I'm gonna put the, uh, the bottom of the eyelid. All of the wampas are always consistent in a sketch. So if this wampa is going this way, then this bottom of the eye is going to go upward, right? The eyelid. The bottom is going to go wampa, wampa. And so you can erase that little part of the bottom of the eye. And she is looking a little bit over in this direction. So I am going to add that. Now, we've got uh, the eyebrows. If the wampa, if the eyeline wampa is going up, the eyebrow is going to arch up. But if the wampa is looking down, then the eyebrow is going to tend to flatten out. Let's just do a real quick sketch over here of a wampa that would be going, that would be looking down. So we've got this kind of sphere egg shape over here that we're gonna use as an example. Let's make our wampa a little bit less dead center. Let's make it over here just a little bit. If your eye line is not, if it's looking down, you don't see a nostril, right? You just see the tip of the nose and your eye line might still be in the center, maybe slightly, here, let me get that a little bit lower. Maybe the eye line wampa is looking that, it's going down instead of up, and then your nose is going to be right about there. You see the difference? And then if you've got your eyeballs sketched in, you can see that the eye line is looking down slightly. Oftentimes that's what's happening. I mean, you know, you have to analyze your own, your own figure that you're, in, you're being inspired from, but that's what, that's what we're gonna do right now. So if, if the wampa is going this way, then the eyebrow is going to go even out. It's not gonna go arched like this. It's going to tend to even out. It might have a little bit of an upward movement, but it's much more downward than upward, or, or it's certainly flatter. And if it's looking downward, then you're going to see way more of the hair up here, and you're, not, you're going to see way less of the chin down here, right? And whereas if, if the head is looking down, your lip, the bottom of the lip is going to go down, just like your nose is down, and just like the, the eyelids are down. When, you, when the eye line is wampa is going up, then you see your nostrils, you see the upward arch of the lip, but then the bottom lip doesn't go down, it goes up. That's a really important thing to keep in mind because if you can see the wampas, you can see the world. And if the, if the wampas going wampa, 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 guess what? Your chin is gonna go wampa. This chin is gonna go down but this chin is going to go up with the rest of the uh, the rest of the wampas, right? Now we're also going to see more of this ear because we see more of that face, and we're going to see less of this ear, right? And I'm going to just put just a little bit more of a head on her, just because I just feel like it needs it. Now uh, we're going to work on hair later, but let's just get the rest of our body drawn out. So next thing would be the the neck. The neck is always coming from the ear. So this neck is, and you can see it in, this, in, the, in, in our uh, inspiration picture, you can see that neck just 
just touching that ear. And so that's what we're doing here. But this neck, this ear is more hidden because there's we don't see as much on this side. So this neck is behind this face and it's actually doing more of this kind of thing. Does that make sense? I hope so. So now we have the shoulders to look at. Well, these shoulders are actually going, it's lower on the right. So let's put our shoulders going, this is another wampa to think about. I'm gonna exaggerate this so that you really see it. Okay, now her shoulders aren't that wide, but I just wanted to really, you know, emphasize just how ang angled that shoulder line is. So let's just shorten that just a little bit. And then what's happening? Well, the, the neck is going to go slightly down, but then it goes back up because the shoulder bone is catching it, right? And the same thing on this side, it's gonna go down slightly, but then it's, the shoulder bone's gonna catch it and it's gonna go back up. Sometimes it's good to just imagine cutting off the head. If you do an imaginary circle here and cut off the head, then you can see that the shoulder is actually going around the neck and meeting the other side. Sometimes that's helpful to people, sometimes it's not. I just thought I would offer that in case it helps you. So now we are ready to look at the torso wampas. So what's happening with this torso? Sometimes you can analyze it by thinking what the backbone is doing, but more often I think it's easier to think about where would buttons go, center front buttons go on this if she, had a, if she was wearing a, a, a shirt. And this works for men and women, it's, you know, it's the same. So we've got the center of the body right here and it looks like this is going in this direction. Then it dips in a little bit at the bottom of the rib cage, and then there's a belly going out. And we all have bellies. You know, make sure you have a little bit of a sense of a belly anyway. Even on a smaller woman like this, there's a, there's a bit of a belly. So let's see if we can get that on this side. We're starting in the center, and we're moving slightly like this, dipping back in doing this. Now, at about this time, I might be thinking, um, what about lengthwise? Is this still in proportion? Usually your head length, if you do another head length, the next head length is your chest line. So this would be another head length right here. And then another headline is your waistline. So this is about the waistline here. So I do need to actually move this down a little bit longer. Let's, let's just... Okay, so, so this is one head length. Here's another head length, which is gonna be the chest line. Here's another head length, which is the waistline. The fourth head length is the crotch. So the crotch is gonna be right about here. And you might want, I always like to look at points. If this crotch point, I always like to find a reference point. What is happening at the top of the body? This is so I check myself for alignment. What's happening, happening at the top of the body? It looks like the crotch is about in line with where the neck meets the shoulder. So I'm going to check that. Is that pretty much in line? Yes, it, lo it does look like it's in line. So we're, we're, we're okay at this point. Now, let's find what's happening with that chest line. Here's another wampa. Look at this wampa. It's, it's also kind of good. Sometimes the chest line is in opposition to the shoulder line. In this case, it actually looks like it's in, uh, in sync with the shoulder line. Both of them are going downward. So, and, and again, uh, I, I like, for the chest line, I like to find the nipple. So the, so the nipple is right about here and here. And so if I go up and check myself for the vertical alignment, um, the nipple is hitting right about here. And on this side, it's, we see more of this breast and we see less of this breast because this wampa has, you know, this one was going this way. 
this way. This one's going this way. So this, this nipple is further over on this side, on this way, and it's down lower. You know, we've got this, this shape going like this. So this nipple is over here somewhere, okay? I hope that makes sense to you. Then we've got our waistline. Our waistline is also, uh, it's starting to flatten out a little bit. It's not dipping as much, but it still is dipping a little bit on the, uh, on the right. And where's the, the, where's the waistline in terms of another vertical point? Okay, so if this is our waistline right here, the, it, the waistline is stopping right about where that shoulder this is our waistline, our, our waistline point right about here. Same thing on this side. This point here is slightly in from that nipple, right? So if we, if we make that waistline right about there, and it's slightly lower on that side, we've got that, we've got our waistline wampa, we've got our chest line wampa, and we've got our shoulder wampa. So now we can Think about our hip bones. What's happening with our hip bones? If the weight is, if most of the weight is on this hip, this hip bone is gonna be higher than this hip bone. That makes sense, right? So, so this is gonna be a higher hip bone and it's gonna swing lower on this side. So notice this is a, 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 a wampa, a, a hip line wampa is out of sync with these wampas. But that's oftentimes called what the Renaissance artists called contraposto. So we have this hip line going out slightly beyond this waistline point, and we have this hip line point just almost in line with where that waistline is ending, but it's lower. It's lower because this is the leg that's holding up the body. So this is coming around like this. Does that make sense? I hope. So that you have wampa, 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 but this is out of sync. This is going opposite directions. And the Renaissance artists saw this kind of pose in many human poses. And so they, they celebrated it. They oftentimes thought this was, a, you know, one of the more interesting poses. Uh, that, and, and, you know, it just makes sense that oftentimes we're, we're, um, uh, we're holding up our body with one leg, not, not equally balancing our weight with both legs, especially when we're just standing. Now, we've got, uh, we've got we know our crotch point, we know our hip point, we know this wampa point, so if we put diapers, as I, I always like to call it diapers, if we put diapers on her, this wampa is gonna go in this direction because it's wampa, wampa, and then this is gonna go wampa like that. That's gonna be the, the, the leg line. And that's important to know because a lot of times people say, oh, well, to put diapers on, I'm gonna go like this. Au contraire, that's not going to be, that's not going to give you the, the, sh the shape. So if, if the center front torso is going this way, then this is going to go this way and this way. If the center front torso is going this way, then this is going to go this way and uh, this way, opposite. So now we're ready to find the knee. Usually the leg bearing knee is going to be higher than the knee that's not bearing weight. You can see that here's the knee and that's much lower. And the knee doesn't follow a, a head length. Uh, you know, if you've got one head length, two head lengths, three head lengths, four head, head lengths, five, six, seven, Usually the human figure is about seven and a half inches. Uh, I think Randy likes to use eight inch head lengths. And you know, I mean, you know, we're, you know there's, there's generalities in anything. Um, but the fashion model uh, sketches are always eight and a half head lengths or nine head lengths. But we're trying to create real bodies because our actors are real actors. We don't want to give a false impression of what they look like on stage. So we know that our feet are gonna end somewhere around here. Usually the knees 
and somewhere in between these two these these head lengths right here and sure enough if we analyze this i'm going to say that it's somewhere around in here but then i need to find where it's aligned some other alignment up here something else that i've sketched up here so i get it not just the vertical placement but the horizontal placement as well so let's see where this aligns with something familiar it almost looks like it's aligning just right there at the edge of that throat. So if we look at our throat here, looks like that's their knee point right there. And what I like to do with knees is just cut their legs off. So if you have, you have your, you have this, this is our waistline, the hip extends out to meet that hip bone. And then once it gets over the hip bone, it relaxes, relaxes just a little bit. And then it comes back out for our thighs. And so we've got our leg right there. Now, this, this knee is much lower, right? And where is the alignment on this knee? This knee is way out here past the shoulder. So if we come out way past the shoulder and we go down lower than that, that point is somewhere around there, right? And, and we know that this, this hip line is, uh, Let's see, this is going something like this, it's going like this, it's going like this. And so once it gets past that hip line, it's gonna relax a little bit and then come down to that knee. Now, this side of the knee is tricky because the, that side of the knee is actually coming from the crack in the back. If you can just imagine the, you know, where the crack is in between her two cheeks, Sometimes you might even want to sketch it if, if this is the center front going this way, the crack in the back is going this way. And so that thigh is coming from a play, it's coming lower, it's coming lower than the crotch point. If that doesn't make sense to you right now, don't worry about it. If you draw, sketch, if you, if you draw figures often enough, you'll start to really that'll be second nature to you you'll just be able to see that automatically so we've got our our knees and now it's just a question of finding our ankles this ankle look at this this is this ankle is way over to the to the right of the bottom of that uh, of that knee right so this ankle is going to be slightly over it's going to be somewhere around here right about there and so our leg we're just going to get our calf worked in and then we're going to get that calf worked in and then look at the feet are really challenging to draw and i always like to say look at the geometric shapes find the triangles in the feet same with hands find the rectangles the triangles don't think of them as feet think of them as as geometric shapes and so this one is very easy to see it's a little bit of a fleshy triangle so this is going to go out and this is going to go out but it's not going in, it looks like it might be into a point, but that'll make it look like a puppet dangling on a string. You need to see the front part of the toe, so it's not really a point, it's actually just a little bit of a toe. And so on this side, we gotta find this angle now. And so th this ankle is way out beyond that knee, right? And how, where is it in position to this one? It looks like it's slightly lower, but the leg that's holding the, the weight is going to be the shortest. And sure enough, this ankle is slightly longer than this one. So let's find, we know that it's gonna be somewhere around here, and then it's way out here past, it's way out past the shoulder and the, and the, the knee. So we, our ankle over here is way out here. So if we've got that ankle, way out there and we've even got a little bit of a heel and we know that Mary Ann's going to have a heel remember I showed you guys the French heels that were oftentimes popular in this period so we've got this and then we can just take this out and it looks like this is 
Re look at, find the instep when there's a heel. Once you find the heel, then you can find the heel of the shoe, then you can find the instep, and just remember that the heel and the instep both have to align. And so we've got this going like this, and so now we can find our legs. So this leg is going to go And then it's, it, it, a lot of times people want to go like this, but that looks like socks or booties. I mean, that, that leg and that foot have to go down the incline because of the heel, the, high, the height of the heel. So it's going to go down, not up. Okay, so we're, we're moving right along. What's going to happen up here? We've got, we, we have one arm that's actually hidden. So we are, first of all, this wampa is going this way. So this wampa is gonna go that way, right? This wampa is gonna go that way. So wampa, wampa, wampa. And then there's gonna be a little bit of a roundness for that arm. Oops, that's a little bit too big for her. Um, we're going to have just a little bit of a... And where's that elbow? Where's the elbow point? In, it's, the lower, it's, it's lower than the nipples and it's slightly higher than the waist. So the elbow point is somewhere around in here. It's, it's a little bit further out from the knee over here. You see what I mean? We, you're always checking points, reference points. I think that's the easiest way to sketch it. And, and so this elbow is gonna not just be out here, but it's slightly in, uh, it's actually not that far out. It's actually maybe right, right about there. And I can check this point by looking at the negative space. Anytime you have negative space, take advantage of it because that can help keep you honest with some of these outside points. So let's draw our negative space. Let's not even draw this arm. Let's, not, let's just draw that negative space and that will help us find the muscles of the arm without actually looking at the arm. And over here we have this going like this. Then it's dipping like it's going like that, like that, and then this side is go meeting right there, and this arm, this part of the arm has to follow suit, right? So that's that's coming there. So we've drawn this negative space, and by doing that, we've actually drawn our arm. Now on this side, we've got a hand, and we've got. A whole other kind of thing to analyze. So over here, we're not going to see as much of this arm, right? Because this is a wampa. We saw a lot of this arm because this is a wampa this way. If you cut off her arm, you would actually see some of the back. But on this side, if you cut off her arm, it, you, it would be hit. The back would be hidden, right? So we're not going to see as much of this arm and it's coming down. A good rule of thumb is that the elbow is right in line, closely in line with the waist. But since she's, she's going downward here, our elbow is going to actually be a little bit lower than the waist, right? Just by slightly. And one thing, I can, I can demonstrate this. Here's my shoe and here's the, here's the elbow. So the, from the elbow uh, to the shoulder is about the size of a foot. From the uh, elbow to the wrist uh, is just a little bit less than the size of a foot. And you know, if you put your, your, your foot is about the size of your head length and your hand is about is the size of your face. So that's another thing to keep in mind, you know, how you can think about proportion in practical ways. If that's helpful to you, great. If it's not, then just, just forget about it. So now, look, we have this really small negative space here, a very little space. So that what that's telling us is that this, this nipple, this, this breast on this side is going, extending out quite a bit. And, and then it's coming into the waist and then it's going back out. It's something like that. Let's see, let's make this a little bit smaller, I think. Yeah. And so, I've 
got this, I've still got this shoulder out just a little bit too, you know, and you know, as you start, as you sketch more and more, you'll find that you kind of finesse your, your points. That's why an eraser is handy. And so now we're gonna take this arm and we, we're gonna not draw the arm, we're just gonna draw that negative space right there. You see that negative space? I just drew that negative space right in there. And so we've got our elbow, the, the inside of our elbow arm right here. And then the wrist is almost always in line with the crotch. But again, since this is down a little bit lower, this is going to be just a little bit lower. Now we've, we're, now we've got that negative space right there that we can draw right? So we've got this, and then we've got this thumb. And then again, just start thinking about the hand as geometric shapes. So we've got this. The knuckles are right about there. Let's draw that, ne that negative space right there. Then we're folding that finger into there. And we've got basically a, you know, and if I had more time, I would, I would perfect that a little bit more, but it's, it's indicative. Never draw fingers. Draw in the negative space around the fingers because it's easy for them to start looking like spaghetti. Now you, you're saying, gosh, Deb, I can't do this on all of my sketches. It's just way too cumbersome and, and too long and it's too much to think about. Well, um, it's not going to take you as long as it's taking me to explain it. Keep that in mind. It's going to take you, you know, half the time because you're just doing it. You're not talking about it. But uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that if you've got a good body, then the, the, the costume will go on effortlessly. The body is the most challenging thing to draw. So now we're ready, and you'll see how quickly we can do the rest of this now that we've got a good body, uh, you know, a body that's accurate, that's in good proportion. So you're looking at your research book. You're, you're looking at two samples for each of your characters that you've already done. Let's pretend like this is one of my samples for Marianne. So the body pose is slightly different, but but we can basically start sketching with this in mind. The wampa of her face is going exactly opposite from the wampa of her face, right? But we do know that the hair has got that hurlu burlu and the love lock that I talked about in class. The, on this side, we see more of this part of the hair because the wampa is way over here. This one, the wampa is further over here, so we're going to see more of the hair on this side. When you sketch hair, just sketch the abstract shape of it. Don't do single strands because they just look like spaghetti, like your fingers. Just do the outside shape. So we've got this, and then the hair goes out, right? It goes way out. And then it goes into this lovely love lock and there's going to be some shadow right in there where it you know that it's darker where the the hair is meeting the neck the neck is receding and then let's go on the other side so this side's going to go ba bump and then it's going to go way out but it's not going to go out as far as that side right actually let's make this side a little bit further out this side's going to be less and we're, we're not gonna see any love lock on that side. We don't even see the ear though, the ear gets hidden. And so then all we have to do is just put our bangs on. And we might do some little spit curls for the bangs, that was popular back then. And then all we need to do is start seeing some of the curl shapes. So that it looks like there's a big sausage curl here. And there's a big sausage curl here. And so just treat the abstract shapes, not actual hair strands. I can't, I can't express how easier that will make your life if you think of the hair as a shape, a geometric shape. Don't think, ever think of it as hair. So here's some sausage curls going out like this, 
Looks like here's another one that actually that's going in like that. And this one's going back out. Okay, so we've got her hair. So now we notice that the decolletage is very low. And so we know that this is our chest line. So we're gonna have this neckline go like this. There's gonna be more shown on this side, less on this side, a little bit less on this side. And then the center of this, we've already got this marked. So our stomacher, our stomacher is going to be going this way going lower than the waistline, right? And so this is a wampa this way, so this is a wampa, and this is a wampa to the, a little bit lower than the, than the uh, waistline, but higher than the hip line, right? Okay, so then we've got these decorations. Now maybe, you know, as designer, you're, you might not be copying everything on this. You might want some things from your other sample. So maybe we don't do these, maybe we've got other neater things to do for that, for that bodice. But we are going to use that white accent that's coming from her undershirt, her chemise. And then we've got, got this little peplum that we could add just, and it's kind of flaring out. We like that from our sample, so we're gonna add that. And then we've got these cartridge pleating. And you know, it's really tempting because we think in contemporary terms that you don't have so much excess fabric at the hip. But this is a period where you'll see a lot of excess. Uh, and you know, just study your samples and it will, that will give you clues. This, this cartridge pleating is making this skirt go way out, right? It's going way out, and this side is going way out. And maybe this, since we want to show that arm, we're just, we're having the, the skirt go out behind her arm, and then it's just getting out of the way from, you know, from, so that her arm is, is sitting on that. We're gonna have more on this side, and so we've got that shape, so now, what is it going to do at the bottom? The, uh, we've got an overskirt and the la secret underskirt. So this is going to go down past the knee. Then it's going to wrap like this. These are kind of you can see these these folds. They're doing some you know some interesting things. And on this side, this is going oh well. You know, this is almost like her, her hand. Maybe her hand is, is holding some of this. And then, yeah, maybe she's grabbing onto that fold of, in the skirt. And then it's going in like this and then going like that. And then we have some folds happening that way. And so now, what are we gonna do with the center front of the skirt? The center front of the skirt looks like it's gonna hit right here. And almost always, this is just a good rule of thumb to think about, the center front is the longest part of the skirt. If you think about it, if that's the center part, then this is gonna go up. This is gonna go, and you can see how this is slightly going up. Uh, so that's gonna go slightly like that and like that. And then this is gonna go like this. And remember, this is over that skirt, so this skirt, this skirt can't come any higher than that. And so we've got that. Then all we have to do is erase all these legs. And you might say, well, Deb, why do I need to draw the body? I mean, why do I have to take all that time? I promise you, you won't get the shape of that skirt and the shape of the sleeves, etc., if you don't have the body figured out in advance. A good body makes a good sketch, and a good sketch makes a very easy rendering. So uh, you're you're just you're you're getting more and more effortless if you start with a good body. So here's our here's our wampa. So we're finding our wampa here. This is here. This is the center part, and then maybe we have some print and talus on either side, some kind of something around here that we want to 
you know, this is all embroidery. Remember we talked about how fancy some of that print and tal ice is, and I'm just gonna just kind of fill it in real quickly here. Now, the sleeves, and then we're done. And it's not even been an hour because I've got my watch. I'm looking at it right here. So this sleeve, if we like these poofs, then let's, let's put the poofs on. So this is gonna be going like this. Erase the arm. Then this next one is gonna bell out. Erase the arm. This one is gonna go out like this. And then there's a big ruffle here. So this is, and we've got, we've got our ruffle. You might not know, but, but I know that, that in this century, uh, and you, you'll, you'll see it the more you observe, uh, that there's, there's, there's lines in the corset that are helping to shape all of this. So there's gonna be a line here, there's gonna be a line here. And maybe what we have as our echelon, maybe we want, instead of what the, maybe our second sample has a whole series of bows here. So we have a bow here, we have a bow here. We have a bow here and a bow here. And a bow here, and a bow here. And maybe the inside of this is striped fabric so that it kind of sets the bows off a little bit. That's kind of pretty. And so now we can do this other side. And I'm not going to take time to do the other side because uh, chances are you, you, you well, we, we, yeah, why not? Let's just, let's just go ahead and put it in. We've got these flared sleeves, and then we'll have that, that ruffle. And we'll probably have it shorter at the top and then longer at the bottom. But but we don't see any of that arm, so that's all kind of being hidden. Actually, that looks kind of weird, doesn't it? It almost seems like we need to add our arm here. I'm gonna just add an arm, because it's just bothering me. You know, I mean, let your, let your drawing speak to you. You know, it'll tell you a lot if you just listen. And you can freehand hands, <laughs> like I'm doing. It's just, uh, it's so much easier, I think, especially when you're not used to drawing, to, um, you know, to draw from, from a real body because then you'll make sure that your hands are pretty close. These hands actually could maybe go a little bit bigger because, I, like I said, you know, hands are usually as big as the, the face. So I I'm, I'm think I'm going to make these just a little bit bigger. And that is our body for Marianne. We, we can uh, add a tongue to this shoe or maybe we even have a shoe rose. Remember we talked about shoe roses and she's certainly one of those one extravagant ones that Madame Purnell is so upset about. She's got lots of, so maybe we have, we have a little bit of a shoe rose on there. And then, you know, I've got some smudges on here. Sometimes people say that's a sign of a, a lovely handcrafted sketch. Uh, but you can always take an eraser, a good, a good big fat eraser and get a lot of that off. If you, if you like. But that's what we have today. And we will carry on with the next demo on watercolors. And I promise you, you will love watercolors.